Barack Hussein Obama do solemnly swear. Inauguration day for President Barack Obama. So help me God. With Beyonce singing the national anthem. Who's brought a moving moment every time I look at her you know singing for the president and performing worldwide and then I think you know that was my baby Darlette Johnson was Beyonce's childhood dance teacher I know that she's Beyonce I know that she's worldwide and everybody know her and everybody screams to touch her but even when I see her she's still my Beyonce A proud moment that didn't last long. Did Beyonce fake it at the inauguration? This was a question on a lot of lips in Washington today. Beyonce and her lip sync stunner. Did she or didn't she? Did she, didn't she, and does it even matter? This was Beyonce's response, posted to Instagram. Online and on air. I'm saying, leave Beyonce alone. Was it live or on tape? She became a hot topic of conversation. I'm not surprised that she did lip sync. I still um, don't think she did, though. I just think people think there just has to be something else behind who she is. Gail Mitchell writes for Billboard magazine. That no one's really that nice. No one's really, you know, that gracious. And maybe that's why people attack so hard with the whole inauguration lip syncing. It turned out that Beyonce had used a pre-recorded track. Would you guys mind standing? But at a press conference 10 days later. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn? Early light. Beyonce silenced her critics. The punchline? Any questions? <laughs> Not likely. It's all of different countries. Matthew Knowles is Beyonce's father. Sing it this time. And for decades managed her career. You know, at 15, 16 years old, you don't quite yet have the maturity. Uh, to quite understand or how to take criticism. <laughs> I missed those, so I said stop. And I did that anyway, so if I messed up your punch, can you? No, that's cool, that's okay. good. So, so as she's gotten older, and now she's a grown-ass woman, so, you know, she understands it. Beyonce feels this is her time. I feel like 30 is the ideal age because you're mature enough to, to, to know who you are and to have your boundaries and your standards and not be afraid of too polite, but you're young enough to be a young woman. I'm very aware of who I am and um, I, I feel great. For Beyonce Knowles Carter, lately it has been one hell of a run. Back in the summer of 2011, there was a tummy rub at the Video Music Awards. By the next January, the singer, dancer, actor, filmmaker, entrepreneur, and fashion icon was also mom. And with the birth of Blue Ivy came a new burst of creativity. I think as a new mom, you get a renewed sense of strength, of purpose, of whatever. And I think that that's gelled with her and, and having Blue Ivy. Next thing you know, it's Super Bowl. It's just, you know, one, two, three, let's go. Beyonce emerged from a four-month break ready for reinvention. I think as an artist, you have to constantly reinvent yourself. June Ambrose is a stylist to husband Jay-Z and a friend of the couple. It's just part of the job that you constantly are under construction, always working to be relevant, always thinking of different ways to make a comeback and not compromising who you are as, as, as a woman, as a person. And there could be no bigger stage for her next act than the halftime show at the Super Bowl. The crowd's reaction when she stepped out on stage during halftime was, now the real show is going to start. <laughs> it's like, I felt like the football team was her opening act. Unmatched energy and an eye-popping look. She was a superhero. It was scantily clad. It was tough. It was salacious.
Beyonce has evolved into this being that you just expect greatness from to the point where great isn't even good enough anymore. Pop star Neo collaborates with Beyonce. There's nobody else that's singing like she is. There's nobody else that's giving the energy that she's giving on stage, and much less doing it at the same time, and doing both well at the same time. There's nobody else doing it. For 14 minutes, singing live and backed completely by female artists, Beyonce lived out one of her dreams. I definitely feel that it is my job to empower women. And I, I remember having this dream that my band was all females. And I told my male band at the time, I'm sorry, guys. Y'all are so talented, but you're not women. A coincidental power failure provided the perfect metaphor for the Lights Out performance. How do you think she did? How about exceptional? Uh, and it's difficult because you did, don't have a long time to re rehearse. You've got to be on in the world. I think 140 million people watched her. Does it get any better than that? I would be just as proud if it was 10 people. A new album, a huge world tour, Beyonce is ready for the next big thing. In 2013, what's new anymore? I've got to say hats off to her as an artist, just really trying to thrive for whatever's next. What's next for music's hottest star? And where did it all begin? The whole audience was rocking her name. Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce. And it, that was back when she was like seven, eight years old. Nothing before she was the diva, Diva's getting money. before she was the queen bee, she was just Beyonce Giselle Knowles, a little girl in suburban Houston. Beyonce was really a, a quiet kid, kind of to herself. Hoping to get Beyonce to come out of her shell, Matthew and Tina Knowles sent their seven-year-old daughter to Dartlett Johnson's dance studio. Harder, harder. When you first saw her and she first came in, I mean, did you even notice her? What, what I did notice about her is she was very shy. You would, ask, you would ask her, what's your name? Beyonce Knowles. You could barely hear her speak. I said, can you say your name again, sweetheart? Beyonce Knowles. But on the dance floor... Beyonce would dance so hard that she would lose her costume pieces. Sometimes her hat would come off because she was fierce. It was here that Beyonce created her now famous alter ego. Now that's Sasha Fierce. Yes. That's who that is. When she got on the stage, she became a different person. But no one knew Beyonce had a secret. I hummed the song and she finished it and it blew me away. And I stopped and I told her to sing it again and she wouldn't sing it again because she, once again, she was very quiet, very shy. And I promised her a dollar and she sung it again. And I was just, I was floored. And when her parents came to pick her up, I told her she can sing. She can really sing. A multi-million dollar star was born. And I remember her sitting on the floor and I'm telling her, you're gonna be so big. And she, I remember her, she was looking up at me. I said, you watch. The world looks good. At local talent pageants, the pint-sized powerhouse quickly made a name for herself. Before Beyonce's name was even called, the whole audience was rocking her name, sounding her name, Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce. Judy Faustin took Beyonce to many of these pageants. She always won the competitions. We may have had 500 plus junior talents, and she always stood out. Thank you. Adorable. Now, are these all the trophies she won from doing the talent shows and, and the pageants? This is from the pageants, yeah. Wow. Yet no one imagined that at this young age, Beyonce would already face the ugly side of fame. In school, you know, there was some jealousy because she was beginning to be a local star. So there was some jealousy of girls, and um, they said some mean things to her. But the bullying didn't stop her. Fame came knocking at the door of her mother's salon. 
Some ladies came and said, you know what? En Vogue was hot at the time. And they said, you know, we'd like to form a version of En Vogue, but a younger version of En Vogue. Uh, and we would like to have Beyonce be the lead singer of the group. Girls Time was born. Beyonce teamed up with a group of six girls, including her cousin, Kelly Rowland. Beyonce was kind of the pilot of the group. You know, if they got tired, she would encourage them. I call her to, to energize Bunny because Beyonce keep going and going and going. I don't care everywhere he goes. From the local spotlight to the national stage. These girls, girls' time, ended up going to Star Search, ended up competing against some 40-year-olds. A perfect score, the challenger girls time receives. And they, they lose, and they're crying their hearts out. And I go over to uh, Ed McMahon, and I say, Mr. McMahon, and the kids are crying. Well, I'm a dad, what do I do? He says, well, uh, all I know is uh, those who lose, they go back and they rededicate, refocus. And that's what Matthew Knowles had them do. In 1995, he resigned from his corporate job at Xerox to manage the girls full time. I couldn't look them in the eye and say, give it your all if I wasn't doing it. So that's a lesson that you taught Beyonce kind of by example to this is how you dedicate yourself to this craft. Yes. And it was difficult. All they wanted was a major record deal, and that meant lots of hard work. Here's some rare footage of Beyonce working on some early recordings. <laughs> Dwayne Wiggins was their producer. Beyonce automatically stood out. I mean, everybody would say that because she simply was um, a very focused young lady. That focus paid off with a big record contract. Michael Malden was an executive at Columbia Records. We could tell she had pipes, and we could tell, you know, again, they were young pipes, and because that's what you want to do is try to find groups that you can incubate or, and put in the incubator and just kind of develop. The group settled on a name, Destiny's Child, and the hit started coming, like No, No, No. So come and get my love. I'm here for you. Destiny's Child was on the express ride to the top until... What happened was the girls wanted new management, so that was um, pretty tough for Beyonce because um, her father is manager. The two members who wanted Beyonce's father out were quickly replaced. Uh, Beyonce was a, you know, the one who got the black eye for it. Very, very, very unjustly. Beyonce became public enemy number one with fans and the press, even being called a blood-sucking diva. The criticism was nothing new for the girl who was bullied at age nine for her talent. But now, 10 years older, Beyonce was stronger. Her song said it, she was a survivor. The publicity from the scandal was seemingly priceless. People couldn't get enough of Destiny's Child. By the 2001 Grammys, Destiny's Child seemed unstoppable, or at least that's what everyone thought. Big energy, let's go. Give it here. Dance like a star. Listen carefully. Harder, harder. Darlette Johnson's girls, the ones she calls the next generation of Beyonce's, are dancing to Crazy in Love. Makes perfect. Crazy in love, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Do we thing? all wish yes. we were? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy in love. <laughs> it's the first single off Beyonce's very first solo album, Dangerously in Love. And it's the song that launches Beyonce as a major solo superstar and leads to the end of Destiny's Child. I knew that that was gonna take her soaring. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it did. It did. Beyonce's part two, the solo career, begins with Jay-Z. He's in her first solo hit, and he's in her personal life. From their dating, to their wedding, to Baby Blue, the public doesn't learn a single detail until Beyonce is ready to spill it. So, let me show you this. An approach she learned from her father. 
I'm not going to talk about Beyonce the mom. And <laughs> what about Papa G, the granddad? What do you like to do with Blue? I'm not going to talk about that. You get nothing. <laughs> I get nothing. You get nothing. This is Beyonce. It's a philosophy that Beyonce would go on to apply to both her professional and private lives. Nobody learns anything about B until she's ready to tell him. Well, let's talk about Dangerously in Love. The album did really well. Yes. That first solo album debuted at number one and went on to sell more than 11 million copies. The album did really well, and what am I thinking? Tour? <laughs> Studio, tour, more singles, now. <laughs> Normally when the album does very well, you do a tour. There's a small tour, Beyonce's first as a solo artist, followed by three more solo albums and a total of five solo number one hits, including 2008's Single Ladies. Movies? Because I'm Foxy Cleopatra, and I'm a whole lot of woman. A fashion line. Oh, yeah. And numerous endorsements, including a new one with Pepsi that will pay Beyonce to advertise its products and fund some of her creative projects. I think it's a huge deal. I think it says a lot about her as a brand, her about her music, and that Pepsi would do something like that for a black female music artist. That's tremendous. It's a deal that demonstrates she is as good a businesswoman as she is a performer. My father was such a, an incredible entrepreneur, and any and everything he said he would have, he worked until he had it. And he taught me there's no such thing as no. My personal opinion is she watched. She watched her dad. She watched her mom. I mean, her mom ran a hair salon. She's got this business savvy that a lot of people either, a lot of creative types, they're not, they're one side. Those two sides of Beyonce are more important than ever. She's now on her own. Two years ago, she announced her father would no longer be her manager. I wonder where can she or where does she go from here? I think that's a question you should ask Beyonce. I think she has the ability, the talent, passion, fans, that she can, quite frankly, go wherever she like to go. They have money and fame. Where she's but going next is the documentary cry. world. She is the director of the story of her life that aired on HBO. Power is not given to you. You have to take it. You're playing a part in a much bigger show. And that's what life is. We learned more about the personal details she usually withholds, such as the miscarriage she suffered prior to Blue Ivy. But even before the documentary aired, she was becoming a little freer with personal information, thanks to a large and active Tumblr site. So if they're posting it, you're supposed to know it. If they're not posting it, you ain't supposed to know it. <laughs> What the online and documentary projects have in common is that Beyonce controls the content. After the doc, there's a world tour. Mrs. Carter? That's Beyonce confirming four years later that she's married to Jay-Z, whose given name is Sean Carter. And details on the next album? Writer-producer Neo promises whatever music she produces in the future will push the edges creatively. She's not afraid to take a risk. She's not afraid to take a shot. You know, she, she's, not afraid to, she's not afraid to do this. And if you hit, you hit, and if you don't, you don't. But aside from admitting to some recording sessions with Beyonce, he won't say any more. And I'm not gonna be the one <laughs> to let the cat out of the bag. Y'all ain't gonna get me in trouble. No, sir. Mm -mm. Nobody has the patience to wait for the greatness. They just want everything quick, 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 and it's like, if you actually take the time to wait for it, it just makes it that much better when you actually get it. Wait for it, world. The tour is coming. Her website is promoting it. The rest, she'll tell you when she's good and ready.